why make art? What, what do you find by doing it? What does it get you? I always wanted an alternative existence, and by that I mean I wanted to do something where I could study my own uh, sentiments and experiences. And I found that I could do that in relation to making things, and making art in particular. That was famed artist Richard Serra, who became known as one of the era's great sculptors. Serra died at the age of 85 last Tuesday at his home in New York. He's known for sculpting steel into enormous environments of shapes that are meant for viewers to walk through and fully experience the art. He's one of Mrs. Brzezinski's favorite artists, as well as Mika's. With us now to discuss the life and the legacy of Richard Serra is Charles DeSantis. He's the president of the San Francisco Art Institute Legacy Foundation and is also the founder of the Kibera Art Institute in Nairobi. Charles, thank you so much. I, 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 Thanks so much. I, uh, uh, so Steve Ratner told me a story one time. You know, he worked with uh, so many of the great writers of the New York Times, and one of those writers was Johnny Apple. I said, what was he like? He said, well, Johnny Apple is why I do what I do. And I go, what do you mean? He said, I saw him work and immediately knew I could never be as good at him as what he did. Yeah. So I knew I had to get, get away from the Times and go into another field. Richard Serra had a similar experience, right? He had a very similar experience. Thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to talk about Sarah and, you know, not being discussing um, the other things in the world, but art, which is something prevalent in all of our lives. You know, Sarah um, started out um, as an English lit major at um, UC Berkeley and then transferred to um, Santa Barbara, where he ended up graduating and was going to go on and ended up um, being pushed to go to... Um, get his BFA and his MFA at Yale. And after he did that, he actually went on to um, go study in Europe on a Fulbright. And when he was in Spain and he saw, saw uh, Las Meninas, which is Diego Velasquez um, painting in the Prado, he's like, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that at all, right? <laughs> Why would I do this? And um, so he wasn't set out to be a sculpture, sculptor. He was set out to be a painter. And um, so, you know, when he circled back to the U.S. and he also had gone to Japan and had some scenarios where he really, really loved the gardens in Japan and came back to the U.S., he really settled into sculpture and, in, in, you know, using many different um, variations of materials, rubber and neon and fiber until right. he and, and lead. Mm -hmm. And then he really, in my mind, is the king of the steel sculpture. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I adore Miss mm -hmm. um, Brzezinski's work. I've been in her studio and um, I always thought it was huge. Her work was large to me. Her, her, her work is dwarfed by the impact that um, Richard Serra's work has on it, you know, and yeah. and he um, he was a, a person who believed in it being in sight. Right. It was created for a site. It wasn't like I'm going to create it and then I'm going to place it somewhere. I'm actually going to make it for this scenario. And and so he um, he had some interesting mentors, Jasper Johns, Jackson Pollock. Um, he did yeah. a, a piece for mm -hmm. um, Jasper Johns in his home. And, um, you know, it was um, later, later he got paid for that by a, a, a piece of art that um, Jasper, Jasper Johns gave him. And so, you know, he's a San Franciscan. He was uh, born and raised there. Ch yeah. Charles, one of the, that, one by of the way, the, um, that, that, that's pretty good payment, Caddy. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think no, for right. this morning's show, if you could just send me a Jasper Jones, that would be, you know, that no, would be I'm, fine. No, you know, if that's, I could do what I can, I'll call you later. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we're really lucky here in D.C. that at the Glenstone Museum just outside Washington right. in Maryland, there are a couple of, of Sarah pieces, and they're, yes. they're always my favorites. I, I go straight for them. And I think what always amazes me about his work is that it's so big and solid and steel, and yet right. it's ethereal and, and almost spiritual. I mean, there's a kind of a, a religious quality, and I'm not a religious person, but I feel like I do when I go into a cathedral. And I, I, I just, the way he combines those two opposing forces is always what I love about his work. 
it's it's grace and stability in a, yeah. in a unique grace way, and right? Stability. And and so you know his art. What's interesting about his sculptures is they're not set up um, and supported in any other way than how they're assembled. So there's not supports holding them up. They're weighted and created in a way where when they're they're set in, they're set in, and they're dependent on their own, right? Um, for example, the work in Glenstone was made for Glenstone, right? It was, it was, um, it, it's very specific. And, you know, he's, he's done um, amazing pieces across the world. He's probably, he's the most prolific sculptor as it comes to steel worldwide. And, um, you know, a huge loss, but a huge life. You know, he, he provides an opportunity for the world to experience something like Stonehenge when you relate to his work. It's that powerful and big. And, that's the impact of art as it's meaningful and has a real impact on those that experience it. And yeah. so, um, Donnie, you know, uh, l l let's have Donnie uh, jump in. Donnie, Charles, nice to t <clears throat> nice to talk to you. So an artist, Likewise. <clears throat> excuse me, has two legacies, the, the art that they leave behind and the effect they have on other artists. Who would you say are the heir apparent, the, the, the great up and coming American sculptors that we should keep an eye on? God, I hadn't really thought about that, but, um, you know, he was inspired by people like Brancusi, who did much smaller work, right? And he um, really has is looking at, um, he created freedom for art. He created, created freedom for artists to really think about what they would want to be able to do and what their possibilities would look like. I mean, this piece right here is just gorgeous. And, you know, we get to see these pieces and you're, you're a small individual in this big piece of life that you're experiencing the moment you're in it. And, you know, his work has also not always been so... Um, well received, tilted in New York, which you know was a piece that he did in, at a federal building in New York, and no one loved it, you know, and it, and it, it went up, and people didn't like the fact that it blocked the walk, and that it sometimes got graffiti on it, and you know it went up in '81, it went to it, it went to um, a vote in '85, and was removed in '89, right? I he 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 had the impact of the wor art world by really being able to um, put something that people had to stop and pay attention to. They had to interact yeah. with it. You know, that's extraordinary. Uh, yeah, yeah, it really is. President of the San Francisco Art Institute Legacy Foundation, Charles DeSantis. Thank you so much. We greatly thank appreciate you. it. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, it's great. And Caddy, you know, um, Mika and I had talked about this and wanted to do this segment uh, right after he passed, but it seemed that it always kept getting crowded out. And we just said, you know, Trumpism and, and all the catastrophizing has crowded out too often uh, discussions about art, discussions about music, discussions about the things that actually make us whole, that complete us. Yeah. Uh, and it's just something we need to do more. I'm so I'm so glad to hear that you are a Sarah fan too. Yeah, I, you know I've just come away from that conversation like grinning, ha smiling, and there's so much that's going on in the world that's so bleak. And I'm so glad. I mean, thank you that for me for the end of my week and Friday that I come away from the show after four hours thinking just even looking at the images of those Richard Sarahs has made me feel good. We need more of that in our lives. Oh, yeah. We all do. There's no doubt about it. And hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.